Today, we're playing opposition, which are probably within the four teams that I think capable of winning this league. Crusaders Football Club from North Belfast, the kingpins of Irish League football. Listen to the noise at Seaview. For two years in a row, Crusaders have won the biggest prize of all, the Danska Bank Premiership title. This is a club that has fought to overcome more than most. It was a simple task then to run inside and kill the policeman from almost point blank range. Murder in the stadium. Mayhem on its doorstep. And a journey to the brink of bankruptcy. At that stage it was, if you can't produce the money in your lights out, it's over. This season, Crusaders are preparing to dream the undreamable. But although it's yet to begin, all these friendly matches. Hey, what are we got, the battle lines are already drawn. Natural angles, man. The dream is to win the Premiership for an historic third time in a row. And with the fan base prepared to take loyalty to the extremes. You should speak back to me again. You'll never play for this club again. I'm telling you now. A manager ready to push his players to the limit. Don't burn out. Keep yourself fueled in the flame. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. And a dressing room with faith at its core. Crusaders Football Club is ready for war. But let me tell you something. That's what it's going to be like this season. All our players have done well in the last year or two. Your targets, big targets in your back. We will never, ever, ever be beaten until that whistle blows. It's August, and Crusaders Football Club on North Belfast Shore Road is getting ready for the new season. Tony, give us a hug, mate. Give us a hug. <laughs> well, this is a very homely club, and they always had a very loyal support. Hardy Annuals. Out! 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 Look, Mag, I had to lay myself. Out! Hello, Eric. Time to give us. Hope you don't be Crusaders has just been such a big chunk of my life. You couldn't bear it. Best hour. On those roads with the terrace houses, there is a family of people whose community is in Crusaders Football Club. There's just that great sense of this is our wee hub. This is what we're about. And the warmth of the people for me is they would give you their last. Stephen Baxter has been the first team manager at Crusaders for nearly 12 years. I see the heartbeat of who they are, and they're just a humble people, a joyful people, a people who have experienced hard knocks in life but are all very much together. Crusaders always a working class team and that'll never change, you know what I mean? And that's, that's a good thing, but we've all sorts down here. We're the working class people like myself, but there's people who know maybe a bit of money, you know, they, they, they come down and it's great, it's like one big family. changed from when I was like 10 and now I'm 38. You still get the same buzz. The season is officially underway here in North Belfast. The Heat League. Who opens his account for the season? Can he create another one? Yes, he can. That's the way you start as you mean to go on. 
top, top drawer stuff. Crusaders have notched up their first victory, but there are still 37 games to go before the season ends in April. Every team's going to throw the kitchen sink at you with work rate. What do we want to do? We want to put pressure on them. Owens, who finds him up in injury time. We've dug this out today somehow. Now that's the mark of champions, by the way. Six games into the season, and Crusaders are top of the league. You're chalking them off, and chalking them off, and chalking them off. They are stealing. Eight games in, and Crusaders haven't lost a single match. It's another game of football. It's another game on the roster. Crush them, crush them, crush them until the job is done. And this group of players are achieving, at this moment in time, great things. We will not let that standard drop. By the end of September, Crusaders are five points clear at the top of the league. The dream of a third successive title is closer to becoming a reality. Heading down to Bangor to the physio. Just till I have a bit of rehab on my ankle. Matthew Snoddy is still recovering from the injury he sustained in the Charity Shield game before the season started. I can't imagine life without football. It's torture sitting on the sidelines watching. But I'll bounce back from it. How's that feel okay? It's sore, aye. Eh? It's a bit sore? Yeah. Okay, keep going. I grew up in a house with four sisters and one brother. It was crammed at times and uh, everyone was fighting over the mirror and the sisters were always using the mirror and I was always wanting to fix my hair. And <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed in that part now anyway with me. I want you to go up on your heels and down. Up on your heels and down. It was just an early council estate. Um, Loyalist council estate, you had your paramilitaries obviously are and um, from a young age it was something that I was always wary of. Um, I hated them, to, to say the least. Um, I would have done anything just for them to disappear. Whenever you're playing football everything leaves your head. It definitely is an escape mentally playing football. Indeed, until obviously the final whistle goes and you're, <laughs> you start thinking again. Do you know in another week or so we're going to get you out onto the pitch? Again? Yeah. All right, mate. All okay, good, yeah. Off you come. Two pound, and if they're more than five minutes, they have to pay five pound, and if it's more than ten minutes, it's ten pound. Usually, you get the likes of Sean and Aidan, Colin Coach, who always argue much they owe, but they eventually give me in the end. So, five are you, man? What? Four and one. Four for last week, and one Shows for the start. No, you weren't. Oh, sorry, there is a pound. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah, four quid. Four quid. Okay, you have four quid. Sorry. Nearly two months into the season, and Crusaders still haven't lost a single game. But they're about to take on their arch rivals. It's the North Belfast Derby. This is the game that means more to every single Cruise fan. Linfield's a big game, Glentorn's a big game, they all come around, big games. But this is the game that gets the blood boiling. It's Cliftonville. Once you, it's like, 
It was always about a rub between Cavill and Crusaders. Historically, you did get the religious, political element. North Belfast is a patchwork of Protestant and Catholic enclaves. Where people live often influences their football allegiances because of its location in a loyalist heartland, Crusaders is perceived as a Protestant club. Cliftonville Football Club is just a couple of miles away, but because it's located in a nationalist heartland, it's perceived as a Catholic club. When the two go head to head, fears of sectarian violence are never far away. We hold this unenviable record, 1979, of the biggest police attendance ever at any match in the UK. When you had, I think, 2,100 police officers for 1,900 fans. Crusaders and Cliftonville are, in fact, both cross-community clubs, but tensions occasionally still mar the game. In 2013, the derby had to be called off when loyalist protesters blocked the entrance to Seaview. Big belief here, lads. Big belief. Come on. Big, big, big focus. You know what the different boys have been doing. Israel. On the pitch, Catholic players at Crusaders can be a target for abuse. Sean is a wanker. Um, that's a huge one. Get a lot from Clemville men, you're silly bastard. They have a go because basically I'm a Catholic playing for a Protestant team. It's as simple as that. All it does is drags me on to make sure that we beat your team. North Belfast derbies tend to produce moments of magic. Donnelly through to Daniel Hughes, lovely build up from Cliftonville and a finish to match. They took the pee out of us and we couldn't even get close to them. Take the game to this team and on, sort it out. Big 45, come on, big 45, come on. Picked up by Harkin, 3 0. What a strike from Rory Harkin. It's well into the second half and Crusaders are losing 3 0. Cruz! Well, let's go. On that left foot. <laughs> Held in though by Owens. To Richard Clark. Angles across towards Owens. Who's found the net again? <laughs> we are in injury time. For sight. Into the middle towards Beverly. Spilled by the goalkeeper. Still not away, and it's ended up in the back of the net. Is there time for a winner? Gavin White, plenty in the danger area. Spilled by the goalkeeper, followed up by David Cushley, who looks to have won it for Crusaders. The comeback is complete. We put ourselves on the ropes here today for an hour, but nobody counted in the last half hour. And you boys today, Dug that out from somewhere, because that's when character takes over. That's when desire takes over. That's when the want to win mentality kicks in. Let's make sure we now bank that and on to the next one. But as for today, get right into the Sean O'Neill has had a more unusual pathway into the Irish League than most. A Catholic from the Falls Road in Belfast, his first love was Gaelic football. Last one. Come on. Sean still trains at the GAA club he joined when he was just six. Soccer was never something I was really interested in. Obviously, you know, things have 
went a wee bit different for me. Football is probably, you know, it's my bread and butter now. It's, you know, it's my main source of income, even though I work as well, you know, it's, it's something that I enjoy doing. Obviously, I don't enjoy this part. So this is uh, the younger days of Gaelic football. This is me as an under 10, and then as an under 12, where I had flowing locks, unlike today. Good times, really good times. To be honest, I, I, know, I know this might sound so silly, I probably had never been in a pro any Protestants company. I was a, I was a Gaelic, my family was Gaelic, Gaelic, Gaelic. There was no, there was no soccer. Soccer was kind of, as it was called, the foreign sport. At Gaelic training one day in school, and the soccer team had a game, and the soccer goalkeeper went home sick, and the no goalkeeper, the soccer manager asked me, would it do nets? And just went in the goal that day, kind of one two 0 kind of done really well. The team manager at the time. He was also manager at Green Island. He asked me, do you fancy coming to play for Green Island? When I get here, when you take a left here into the Green Island estate, I started to panic. At the time, it was obviously the UVF, UDA flags, and you do think to yourself, oh God, what have I got myself into? Every moment is wearing Rangers tops, and I'm, you know, training, and I'm going myself, oh, I don't believe this, I would put a Celtic gloves. And when I was walking across, this coach, Starzy, he goes like, oh, Celtic, you support Celtic? Good man. It was just football. Just get a wee stretch. Just whatever you feel. Just lay hamstrings, calves, quads. Something's so silly, but it, it means a lot to me. Catholic, Protestant, everyone's human at the end of the day. Everyone's the same. No, it's another human being. So what? He supports Rangers or he blesses himself? Who cares? If you come to Crusaders and you're able to play football and put the ball in the back of your net, that's much more important. Good luck, Mitchie. Come on, mate. Yes! Thanks very much, mate. Thank you, partner. Here, Matt. Skimmer. Shade, didn't it, mate? <laughs> Matthew Snoddy's ankle is recovering well. He's back training with the team. Finally starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Three midfielders on the bench in my, in my position. You know, it's not going to be easy to get back in the game again, but just got to put the hard work in and hopefully get my chance and take it. And then once you get in, it's up to you to keep hold of his shirt and not, not let it go to anyone else. <laughs> Two weeks' time, I'll be back. Crusaders top the league by five points. They are still unbeaten. Plenty of players in the middle. And it's ended up in the back of the Palomino net. All day long they're looking for a ball. The goalkeeper missed kicks it. Jordan's missed the header by a mile. Well worked out for Palomino. Spree tries to get him behind. Flip me. Elementary, dear watching. Keane against O'Neill. 1 1. Only a couple of minutes of normal time left. Kyle Owens is off from the back, it's towards him. And he got a great head to it, it's ended on the back of the net. Kyle Owens. And it's all over. For the first time this season, Crusaders have been defeated. Very well played. Very, much Very well played. Well done. Thank you so much. Your team battle. Your team battle so well for you. Well done. Today we seen a team who wanted it more. They outfought you and out battled you. It's the first day we've let ourselves down. Can I swap places with somebody in here today? Because I tell you what, retired 13 years from this game and I want to play more than anything else. But I can't play. But I tell you what, I wish it was you and I wouldn't leave anything behind. We need to get back to our fighting best.
the dream is, I think, from when you were like six, <laughs> when you're kicking the ball against the wall, saying, I want to play, I want, I want to be a professional football, I want to play for Manchester United. Every schoolboy's dream. I remember going on trial at Nottingham Forest when I was 18. And I remember playing at the city ground in Nottingham going, this is where I'm meant to be. Around that time, I had a very stable relationship with a, a young girl from Belfast. And then I'm going, this is a, the girl of my dreams, I'm gonna marry her. And then I had a bit of a crossroads decision to make. You know, will I really push this one or do I wanna come home and settle down here? And the girl won. What time is it? Quarter to one. So we're 45 minutes. For me to change my mind? <laughs> Only joking. Stephen Baxter went on to marry his girlfriend Lydia, and they had four children. Today, their daughter Rachel is getting married. I think watching all the videos of him when they won the league for the first time and how emotional he was. I remember at the time thinking, if he doesn't cry at my wedding, I'll kill him. <laughs> I wasn't frightened to shut the door on Nottingham Forest and, and really get my Irish League career started. But it's important not to lose sight of all the people who love you so much behind the scenes because they're going through it with you, albeit in a different way. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Just have a kiss. Will you join with me in a prayer of blessing? Let us pray. In the name my whole of life Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is my family, the football and God. Amen. Amen. The world looks in at Christianity in all walks of life and goes that there are rare people. What are they all about? When really, for me, it's the other way around. I'm looking at the world saying, you don't know what you're missing. And that's a good ball for Stephen Baxter. What a goal! What a strike by Baxter! I became a Christian when I was 19. Years later, and I was coming to play football for Crusaders Football Club. And there was 12 Christians at the football club. So we got labelled the God Squad because we went on this great run. Stephen Baxter made his name as a top Irish League player in the 1990s. He and his Christian teammates helped Crusaders win the league twice. Then Hunter, a chance to cross. Finally gets it over. Baxter could be in for third. And he is. A football environment wasn't seen as a Christian environment. And that myth I felt was blown away at that moment. And it, it nearly became an acceptable norm because here's all these Christian footballers who were doing something amazing. Baxter, oh, it could be the top corner. Crusaders are still known for their Christian ethos. A quarter of the dressing room have connections with the evangelical churches which pepper North Belfast. Listen, you only want these sort of 10 minutes, is that okay, Max? Aye, 10 minutes is all right. Okay. Hard Beverlin boosted the Christian numbers at Crusaders when he signed this season. Kit man Frankie Weir has invited him to share his story at the Evangelical Church where he's a pastor. Tonight I want to just take this opportunity and I've been told 10 minutes by Frankie is really strict. So I'm just going to get stuck in here. Um, tonight I just want to share my testimony about what God has done in my life. Sometimes it's about taking on a new challenge and that's what it was for me, moving away from a club where I had been for nine, ten years and moving to a new team who were the league champions and stepping out of your comfort zone. With that comes seeking, well, God, what's your plans here? Okay, if I say I'm a Christian and I've laid my life down and I've taken my hands off the wheel, so to speak, Lord, what do you want? And for me, very quickly, there was a peace being a Christian and being a footballer, I feel that it gives me such a great sense of freedom uh, to go out and to work hard and hopefully win lots of trophies and league titles and cups that comes with that, but yet at the same time to impact somewhere an environment for Jesus.
part of my role there is to, to go out and be, play as part of a team and mix in and, and get to know and build up friendships and be part of the, the, the family. <laughs> Never yeah, up. Oh man, that's a very hard sir. Of course, I'd love it. Some of them said to me, "Well, you know, what do you believe in, or how can I believe you know, what you believe and live my life for Jesus?" And that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Been the key word, um, but yeah, that would be absolutely amazing. Crusaders are about to play one of the biggest games of the season. Five months in, Matthew Snoddy has yet to make the starting lineup. Hopefully, I can be in the manager's thoughts. You know, that'll be gutting. Like if I didn't, if I didn't make a score, I'm not gonna lie. You know, I'll be absolutely gutted. We bit harder, go. Both put the guy one. <laughs> it was always working towards today for me because these are the head to head games that decide who wins championships. The team that rises to the occasion. In the big games, are the teams that go on and do it. Nobody beats us here. Nobody. Nobody. Matthew has failed to make the squad. And it's just I didn't want all midfielders on the bench today. That's and you're coming back. So don't be worried about it. Everything will be grand for you. OK? <laughs> I was coming in my head thinking I was in the squad. I thought to be honest, definitely I would be on the bench. I disagree with it, but that's the manager's decision. I just gotta respect it. Crusaders topped the league by seven points. So far, the only team they haven't managed to beat at least once is Linfield. They're determined to break the stalemate. Crusaders, top of the table, seven points clear of second place, Linfield. It could be a festive cracker. And away we go. Burns. It's a good ball. And no, it's off the bar. Oh, the ball falls. Aaron Burns. Aaron Burns still going. Aaron Burns, he is still going on. Oh. It's pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. We look scared. He wants his keeper to come. Oh, it's a terrible mistake. Summed up by the calamity goal. Have a bit of confidence in who you are and what you do. Oh, it's a good ball, and it's a very good ball! <laughs> now it is squeaky bum time, Heatley. <laughs> and if anybody lifts hands, they could be in trouble. There's a yellow card for Sean O'Neill, and there's a red card for Jamie Mulgrew. And it's over, and there's absolute joy and delight from the Linfield fans. The Linfield defeat is a crushing blow. As the new year begins, Crusaders are still four points clear at the top of the league.
faith is believing in something that you can't see. Can I see another title? I have faith to believe we have, but I can't see it right now because we haven't got there yet. We'll not shortchange anybody and we'll never let anybody down because we'll always give our best. You know, the successes we're talking about now is winning leagues. A few years ago, the success was still being alive. You know, when, when, when things were really bad, um, success was still being there, still having the gates open. In 2005, Crusaders was on the brink of relegation from the Premiership for the first time in its history. Stephen Baxter, whose playing career had come to an end, stepped in as a first-time manager for the last few games. It's dead simple for me. I'd walk, walk over broken glass for them. So that's what it needed to do. I'll come and do it. I'm here to help. Crusaders took on Glenavon in a decisive relegation battle. Our, our life was on the line and we lost. Absolutely got them. It was a real gloomy night. The rain was coming down and I remember coming out of the ground, just absolutely in tears. Didn't leave the house that whole weekend. I really had a fear for the future. Relegation meant much needed premiership funds disappeared overnight. The club was heading for financial meltdown. Basically, we had debts at that time to HMRC with a big debt to the rates, and with debt to the bank, with debt to the brewery. Probably six, seven hundred thousand debt. The club managed to repay most of what it owed, but it was still £120,000 short. Our situation was, if this goes under, this is, a, this is going to affect the lives of 200 kids. It's going to affect the lives of hundreds of supporters. This, there's, there's no way back. It won't, you know, there is no sugar daddy coming in here. In desperation, the club turned to its fans and pleaded with them to lend money out of their own pockets with no guarantee of getting it back. I went down to see what was in my post office account to see if they could afford it, but um, I managed to scrape with the gallery at the time. At the age of 26, Chris Wilson handed over his life savings. It was £500. But the satisfaction that, that £500 has actually given me uh, to see the club really, really take off and grow. Two league championships, an All-Ireland championship, an Irish Cup. See, when you look back at that night against Glenavon in 2005 when we got relegated, you could not have dreamt that. This season, more than 12 years later, Crusaders finally repaid the last of the 50 supporters who saved it from bankruptcy. So our first guy is Philip, Philip Hamilton. Philip here. Fuck, there he is. So <laughs> it gave me great satisfaction just to think that my small gesture was able to be part of that. My sincere thanks go to one and all. Um, to me, you are the heroes of this club. So everything is good. We're chasing down our third title. Whether we win the title or don't win the title, in my eyes, we're the biggest success story in the league. It sits very proudly in my mantelpiece with those. Pray to please. There's a baby boom at Crusaders. Sean O'Neill is one of six players about to become a father. This is where the baby's going to sleep. I'm laughing, my luggage is sitting packed ready to go. Sean was having anxiety that I hadn't got a pack, so he made me no, pack. No, 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 <laughs> no. I have anxiety about these bags. Well, she she's expecting me to carry this stuff to the hospital. <laughs> look at this, look at the. Imagine me walking in the hospital going, here's, here's a bag. Ah, dead on, some chance. And the, the, <laughs> it gets better because there's actually two of them. <laughs> Not one, two. 
<laughs> There's not a one hope One for me, one for the people. Her mummy <laughs> is carrying these in. I'm going to take two weeks, but in terms of football... Oh, football, are you sure? Like, you can't. There's no breaker. No. There's times when you do get fed up listening about it. Do you know, like, last Saturday, do you know the... But oh, last Saturday, she's talking Clippenville about the Clippenville game, game, where I was kind of hounded on social media. He was made out to be the villain, and it's, <laughs> it's annoying. I got really upset about it, but he was like, would you wise up, but it upsets me. But that's that's rivalry, that's football rivalry for you. That's and the, then when one of them take a corner, she's a beautiful game. Mad. That's what makes it so. He loves that's what that. You, that's what you want to play. He be buzzing. See on a see on a Cliftonville morning or a Linfield, he's really up for it. Like. You need a measurement tape. Okay, so. Can I just start drawing bullets? No, I can't. Do you want to hear? Yeah, I think ours okay, isn't it? Do you definitely want to? Yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, it's fine there. No, it's okay there. It's in. Yeah. Hello. You're not leaving it if it's Sunday. Hey, what? Yeah. Oh, is that... it Sunday? Come back. Yes, it's Sunday. Of course it's Sunday. Oh, Sean. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Jesus. It's good, it's good, it's good. See? We think like that. Wouldn't it be nice? I'll be lovely, love. Think it is. This, you find a pot of gold. Rainbow? Yeah. Ah, bring it out, Coach! Tommy! Hellfanger? No! It's February, and Crusaders are a comfortable nine points clear at the top of the table. Carrick. <laughs> Rangers? Yeah, and they were a, ga a group of people who were fighting all different colours. A, co a kids' TV <laughs> programme. <laughs> 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 uh, he comes to Christmas and leaves. Power Rangers? What? <laughs> They're about to take on Dungannon, but Sean O'Neill is missing. His partner, Neve, has gone into labour. Am I okay with it? I'm most definitely not okay with it. She could have had the baby two days ago and let it give us all a wee bit of a break, but it has to be done. This is a huge day in his life, so. The stakes for Crusaders are huge. As they enter the last third of the season, they need to keep winning to stay ahead of Linfield who've emerged as their biggest title threat. All of a sudden now, Linfield are in the press saying, we know how to beat Crusaders. We're physical, we've had fought them, we know what we're about and all this here. Make no mistake about it, every single team at this moment in time is gunning for you. Come on! It's three points on the road to the next one. Crusaders are nine points clear at the top of the league. The title is within sight. Yep. We came here to win a league. This is another building block. Are we up? You put them under pressure. You put them under pressure. Pressure fucking kills people. <laughs> Come on. Ah, the Minty! That was an embarrassment of a performance from us. Linfield are coming to get you. You know, you're wilt under the pressure of all of this, or you're going to rise up. Crusaders' lead has dropped by two points. They can take nothing for granted. It's inside of us, inside our heart. Want the game more than that? Crusaders players not given any kind of time in the ball. What are you doing here? Colwell have certainly looked the more threatening so far. It's not good enough! Bradley had peeled away at the back. And it's a judge to Beverland handle the ball, and it's going to be a penalty for the home side. It's Owen Bradley who's going to take the spot kick, and he slots it past Sean O'Neill. A good foot up the fucking hole, that's what I need. Get your fucking act together, that's including myself. We all need a fucking pull of gara here. We have a 
four point gap and see next week we have a chance to go and put it back to seven. But it's about fucking balls. Stevie said about heart. It's heart and balls. I'm telling you now, lads. And see at the minute we have no fucking balls. There's now just four points separating Crusaders and Lindfield. The toughest test of the season is just days away. Re emphasize right now. No alcohol. This week, none. Tea total this week. Might eat tonight bed early. Run the bed as well. Keep the, the energy in the legs all week. You win this game of football, the league's over. I promise yeah. you. Yeah. I promise yeah. you. But we need to be mentally, mentally switched on to this whole game now. Well, Joe Burns has made a mistake with a back pass, and he's allowed Waterworth in. The body language of the Crusaders players may be telling its own story. Made its way to Burns. Oh, it's crashed off the goalpost. Oh, it's a casual kid. How's his delivery? Not the best, but it falls for Burns. He can't get under control. Still with Burns. And there's the goal. In seven weeks, Crusaders' lead has dropped dramatically from nine points to just one. We were hopeless. Shocking. As low a performance as I've ever seen, and I feel let down. We were nine points clear going to put it down, and we haven't played from that match. You got sorted out. You got sorted out. Well, three weeks, boys, to win a league title. You're one point ahead. One point. Three weeks. Three weeks to get a response. <laughs> But Crusaders' dream is still within reach. If they win the next four games, they win the league for the third time in a row. Do you lose that hunger? If somebody says to me, ah, Linfield are getting stronger and they'll maybe push away from us, then you've lost the ball. Once you think you've dropped off the peg a little bit, Clifton Bowles your example. Two titles fell apart. Club fell apart. We have stood up for the last two or three years and shown determination, we've shown focus, we've shown attitude, we've shown everything. We have come a million miles down the track. This is the biggest charge for the line that I ever imagined. As semi-professionals, Irish League players are paid a salary, but only on a part-time basis. Most supplement their income with day jobs. This is the heart of Linfield territory, isn't it? Yep. Enemy lines, enemy lines were crossed. I should really be wearing a hat or something. It disguise me here. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing this one here, Scott? Um, yes, sir. Set our dreams. Yeah. When all the magic happens. That's it. Happens in there. Good memories and bad memories. Yeah. It's eight and a half months since Matthew Snoddy was injured. He's yet to make the starting lineup. The lowest point would have been the point that Wyman didn't make the squad against Linfield. So that was the end of the world for me. Um, I was thinking it was just a reject. 
The injury came at a time when he was struggling with his personal life. I had a really, really bad camel on Dixon. I would have went to the bookmaker and stood from 9 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock at night. It drove me to the point where I considered suicide almost. Like. I remember going to the hell with my estate and crying my eyes out. I'd lost big amounts of money that day and I wanted I had no more I had no money to my name. I was standing top of hell and I went, you jump off here, I said, like, you don't need to, there's no worries anymore, it's all done, it's gone. And seeing I was just standing there and the phone went, I pulled the phone in my pocket, and there was a picture of Jansen on the phone, the screensaver. And I just felt so much guilt, I was going, what are you doing up here, are you serious, you have a son there? He says, how selfish are you, how selfish are you standing here doing this, even considering this? Matthew considered suicide two weeks before the injury that has blighted his entire season. I remember actually going, like, oh, like I'm trying to sort myself out here. I remember in my head going, like, why, who's doing this to me here? What? There's 22 players out in that pitch. Why'd that have to happen to me? But little did I know that it was all for a reason and all for a cause. I didn't know this. Matthew has just become a born again Christian. It took God to remove the body of my life for me to go looking for him. From my, I've been saved, I can say now that I have a hope. We can't describe the peace of heart you get when you become a Christian. I'll be honest, the first couple of days I was shy telling everybody. I think it would have been tough just if Hart hadn't been there. He's been a real breath of fresh air with me. He just always says the right things. God's put him in my path for a reason, to, to help me along the way. God's given him me now, to be a brother just as much as to him as what he is to me. Football was my God, but now I've got a God who uh, I can't describe you, what, what he does for you. He just gives you ultimate fulfillment in your heart and knowing that he has a plan for you. And um, I believe I have a purpose here and um, I'm not going to shy away from telling God's good news. Thank you very much. Thanks. I still have a passion to play football, yes, I do. I just keep my faith with God and he'll do the work. It's the penultimate week of the season. 12 Irish League clubs are jostling for their final place in the Premiership and the title is still up for grabs. Always oh, is five space. Oh! Crusaders have maintained their one point lead ahead of Linfield. If they win today and Linfield lose against Korean, they win the league. And the word has started to filter through the ground that Korean may well have taken the lead against Linfield. Hey, stay calm, stay calm. Suddenly, there's fight from the champions. Three kick against Hinkley. 1-1. One, one. Oh, one, one, one each. Still three. Jumping across goal, and Balamino taking the lead. How big a goal could that be in the race for the title? What's the score going on? 3-1, Limpy, have a goal, give me two goals. Balamino struggling a little bit here. Pinned very, very deep in their own half. Very risky from Sean O'Neill, two risky from Sean O'Neill. What a mistake from him as Carrot Free makes it two. And things have just gone from bad to worse for Crusaders. At many stages throughout the season, it looked like Crusaders had this league wrapped up. McMurray's onside, has Freel in the middle. Carrot Free, will he make it three? Yes, he will.
with one game to go. Linfield have taken the lead. I was annoyed for, for 24 hours. And then I went from feeling sorry for myself and down about it for you guys to then sort of going, right, come on, let's prepare for next game. The title is all but out of Crusaders' control. But there's one tiny glimmer of hope. And it all rests with Derby rivals, Cliftonville. The only thing that we can control is what we do. We owe this to them fans that have supported us all year, everywhere we have went. I want to see a performance better than any performance that we have given over the whole season. Because we owe it to them. To have any chance of winning the league, Crusaders must beat Glenavon today, but Cliftonville must also defeat Linfield. The final battle lines are drawn. I want you to remember back to the opening day of the season in a charity shield game and it didn't mean an awful lot. They fought you like they were playing a cup <laughs> final or the league decider to, to beat you. Absolutely horrendous what happened that day, and I haven't forgot it. We've played 37 games of football, and today is the end of the road. But I'm asking for more, because you just never know. In football, you just never know. Lovely pass, and Crusaders have opened the scoring. Important that they get off to a good start today if they're to have any chance of winning the title. Oh, it's in them, they'll get the score. Get the of Cliftonville going ahead has raised the volume of the crowd here at Seaview. Come on, lift the gears again here! Come on! There is the second goal. The Crusaders are very much keeping up their end of the bargain. Get up! Carvel wants it more. He's got in! And he's got his second! As things stand, Crusaders would be top of the table. Not innocent Linfield now, not innocent, one bit. It's gone very quiet here, perhaps, because news is filtering through that Linfield have equalised, which means as things stand, they would finish on top of the table. Players have done him proud today, but Linfield's performance in solitude looks set to wrap up the title. Just before the final whistle, Matthew Snoddy finally gets his chance to shine. And there is a sick for Crusaders, Matthew Snoddy. Matthew scores Crusaders' very last goal of the season. But Crusaders has lost the league to Linfield by two points.
well. It was disappointing in the end. But when you look at where we've come from, them players give everything. So it certainly doesn't let me down. The fan base is always, for me, what it's all about. Playing is brilliant, but you're playing to give them happiness. To see them smile. Well, get it next time. Yeah. Get it next time. Well, hey. Because if life is perfect, you know, there'd be no character building, there would be no learning. You use the disappointments of having not won the league to spur on a greater hunger. Hard Beverland has been named Crusaders Player of the Year. Part of God's plan that he has for me was Crusaders, and I've been assured of that. For me, it's looking back and saying, well, I'm well able for this. This season, I'm grateful for all the pain and suffering I went through, as now I have the life experience now to go out and hopefully inspire other people. So we lost the league. You know, this group of players are strong enough to come back and put things right next year. We fell a little bit short, a hair short. That'll not happen again, because see, next year, we're coming back bigger and stronger. Raise a glass and say congratulations, everybody. What a great year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you have faith, then you're going to achieve your dreams. Keep the faith. Don't lose it. Good times outweigh the bad times, and that's what it's all about, and that's, that's, that's worth it.